All right, thanks. Happening right now, fire crews are on the scene of a two alarm fire in Galt. This one started at around 3.30 this morning on North Lincoln Way near Elm Avenue, just down the street from Galt High School. Here is the video of the scene, and Kasumna's fire crews arrived to find heavy fire in the back of the home that is also listed as a business. They called in help from nearby agencies. No word yet on the cause of the fire or whether or not anyone was hurt. Well, still ahead, a new phase in recovery. The priorities that are now being used for the emergency teams in Maui as the search for hundreds of unaccounted for people continues. And as Hurricane Adalia hammers Florida this morning, the concern over funding for FEMA and how it can afford to respond to natural disasters in the future. We got a live look here. This is Steinhatchee, Florida. You can see the storm surge is uh, just rushed in here. You can see, you can't even see any dry ground. This is a marina, obviously by the coast, but this water is going well inland right now. This is a situation as Hurricane Adalia made landfall as a category three about an hour ago. Well, the latest emergency federal first responders are handling this in what's been a very busy year for them. As a result, FEMA funding is running low. KCR 3's Amy Liu is in Washington now with more on how much the administration says it needs now. Well, FEMA is asking Congress for another $12 billion to get them through the end of September, but says it may need even more as we approach the peak of hurricane season. FEMA is emptying its disaster relief fund, which has a remaining balance of $3.4 billion. The administration is implementing what it calls immediate needs funding, prioritizing what's left for critical response efforts like Hurricane Adalia and the Maui fires. FEMA's administrator is confident the agency can manage both disasters with no disruptions to helping people and state and local officials respond. We are prioritizing funding for Adalia, for the Maui fires and any other extreme weather events that are coming our way without interruption. And I want to stress 
that while immediate needs funding will ensure we can continue to respond to disasters, it is not a permanent solution. FEMA's administrator says the frequency of these natural disasters is increasing and is calling on Congress to help FEMA keep up with what she calls a new normal. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu, KCRA 3 News. Now let's talk about the latest out of Hawaii and authorities are turning their attention to the next phase as search and recovery wraps up, along with now focusing on removing toxic debris and stabilizing the land. A new siren system is in the works and it would be used for future situations. So as of this morning, the death toll from the wildfire is at 115. And this is as the officials are working their way through the FBI's credible list of 300 and 88 missing people. Now they expect to update that list on Friday. Here's a story updated now that we first brought you yesterday. The Rockland girls volleyball team was able to raise $6,500 for a gift card drive for Maui. That team is actually heading to a tournament on the Big Island of Hawaii and they'll be bringing those gift cards. They do plan on giving the money to fellow athletes at Lahaina Luna High School. Turning to KCRA 3 weather coverage now. Let's take a live look here from our sky camera, the Sacramento Exchange Hotel. And we got a little smoke, smoky haze in the air, Tamara Bird, if we're not mistaken. We do, and it's been quite a while, guys, throughout the summer that we've had to deal with wildfire smoke here right, right in our neck of the woods. But this is the morning where it just looks different out there. Live look across Rancho Cordova here, so featuring part of Sacramento County. And you can see going across Highway 50, if this is your normal morning commute, yeah, that sky looks a lot different this morning morning as it is filled in with smoke and haze. Temperature wise, we're starting out the day low 60s in Stockton, upper 60s for Modesto or in the upper 60s in Sacramento, kind of a mild feel start to the morning and in Lake Tahoe where the skies are relatively clear. Your temperatures are in the upper 30s. You could see the concentrated area of where this wildfire smoke looms for the morning. Now, not everybody's impacted by it just yet, and especially if you're joining us, let's say in Placerville, Auburn or Sonora, you're saying, what wildfire smoke? You're not seeing a whole lot of hazy sky in the foothills. Now notice the valley. We're seeing a bigger concentration in areas here of Southern Butte County, down and through Sutter County, Calusa County, Glen County. All of these areas are marked unhealthy in terms of particulate matter just being so thickly concentrated. I'm also seeing that smoke work its way into parts of Yolo County and especially into areas like Davis and Dixon. Now this is a closer look with the purple air sensors here, courtesy of purple air. You you can see Woodland right now, more of these purple icons popping up. Same story in Davis, and that is just very unhealthy air quality that you're likely smelling the smoke as you walk out the door this morning. Advise that you shouldn't be outside for too long of a period of time underneath those types of conditions. Now the smoke is going to move around as we go through the day today. Here's nine o'clock this morning with future cast smoke. You can see the smoke starts to drift into Stockton, Modesto, Turlock and Ceres and Keys area, and you'll even see a little bit of haze sky going into Solano County. Once we hit the two o'clock hour, that smoke starts to thin out a bit more. Conditions will start to greatly improve as more of an onshore breeze will start to take shape and that onshore wind as we go forward into the nighttime should help to eliminate and clear out some of those thicker rounds of wildfire smoke. The other part of the weather story today is that north wind. So it's around this morning, bringing the smoke down from the fire burning that's on the northwestern half of the state. And notice that by 11 AM, we may notice a little jog up in the winds, very isolated area here as you get into parts of rural Yolo County and west of the I-5 corridor. Wind speeds could be 15 to 20 miles an hour, nothing terribly strong. And then by 8 o'clock tonight, we return to more of that onshore flow, and that's going to be enough to help to really uh, bring down temperatures and start to mix out more of the smoke. Not only is it going to be a hazy day, it's going to be a hot one out there. Plan for a high of about 100 degrees and then the heat will start to back off. The smoke will start to clear. A system from the north will drop down and that will bring us some clouds late in the day Thursday and into Friday. Could even bring us a couple of mountain showers as well. So in the seven day forecast, a lot of changes coming through impact day today because of the smoke and you've got the hazy hot conditions. We're still looking at a toasty day at 96 Thursday and then by Friday and Saturday clouds and upper 70s to low 80s.
All right, Brian, take us to the highways. All right, Tim, we're going to start here. Highway 50 at Watt Avenue. You can see folks coming in westbound there right into the lane shift on both sides of the uh, lane shift there. There's no delays looking good on uh, Highway 50 coming into downtown. They've cleared up that crash at 16th Street, so things have really recovered there along the northbound side of 99 and westbound 50. Interstate 80 looking good coming down into the split, Cap City Freeway and over the top and onto the causeway. We are incident free now. Northbound 5 and 99 have also been running at the limit all morning long up to this point, so no delays there. Stockton, no issues to report. If you're coming from Modesto to Manteca, that'll be a 13 minute ride on the 99 corridor. 50 minutes right now across the Tracy Triangle from I-5 to 580, and then an additional 30 minutes on westbound 580 into Dublin. Right now, Highway 50, Rancho Cordova to 99, 10 minute ride there, Interstate 80, nine minutes out of Roseville, five and 99, 11 minute ride out of Elk Grove. Back to you guys. All right, thank you. Well, an all-star performance from the San Francisco Giants. Coming up next, clutch plays that almost led to history for Giants pitcher Alex Cobb. We have a live look here, Sutter Health Park Sky Camera, and it is the next to last Wet Nose Wednesday as you can bring your dog to the ballpark and catch the game on Home Run Hill. Cats dropped the opener to the Albuquerque Isotopes last night. They look to bounce back tonight. First pitch is at 645. Stock and Ports continue their final home stand of the season. They lost the first game to Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. Uh, teams will play again tonight at 705 Banner Island Ballpark. Well, San Francisco Giants all-star pitcher Alex Cobb pitched the game of his life last night, but came up just short of etching his name in the history books. Take a look. Shallow left center. Headlong dive. He made the grab. Austin Slater robs Benson, and Cobb continues to confound the Reds. So that great play in the eighth inning allowed Cobb to take a no hitter into the ninth inning. Cobb is just one out away when Spencer Steer launched the double the way, dashing hopes of the first Giants no hitter since 2015. I mean that close.
although the Giants did come out with the win. You know, happy they won, but so close. <laughs> Incredible. Speaking of so close, she's here. Yeah, she is. <laughs> There you go. Beyonce has arrived and is bringing her Renaissance tour to Levi Stadium tonight. As one of the highest grossing tours of the year, Beyonce's impact on local economies is huge. Hotels and restaurants are looking forward to the boost. And Capitol Corridor is also offering a train to and from Sacramento. If Taylor Swift's concert was any indication, yeah. you may want to go that route. I mean, between Taylor Swift, Beyonce, and Barbie, <laughs> You're welcome. Totally, yeah. You're welcome, absolutely. boys. It's the ladies of summer. <laughs> there really you go, is, right there. It? Well, still ahead, 628 now, an early morning search ending with several people detained. We'll tell you about the big response that's come out from law enforcement during this search for suspects near the Yellow Causeway. And continuing to track the devastation from Hurricane Idalia after it made landfall in Florida about an hour and a half ago, moving into northern Florida, southern Georgia, still as a hurricane. The latest coming up. With the news comes first. This is KCRA 3 News at 6.30. Idalia makes landfall in Florida. How strong it remains right now and where it's heading next. A north wind bringing some smoke into Sacramento. The concern over fires in the North State. And a high speed chase in Sacramento County ends with four young people under arrest in Yolo County. What they are accused of doing. Good morning. It is 631. I'm George Fitzpatrick and I'm Teo Torres. So we're following two big weather stories for you today. One in Northern California, the other, of course, in Florida. And we do have team coverage for you. Dirt Verdorn tracking Hurricane Idalia. Tamara Berg monitoring the air quality from these smoky skies. And then Mike Tassell will have the impact of the smoke that we are already seeing this morning. Let's begin, though, with a live look here. This is Steinhatchee, Florida. Florida, very close to where Idalia made landfall about two hours ago. Major storm surge, that's what you're looking at here. It's the first hurricane to hit this sparsely populated area called Big Bend, Florida, which is just north of Tampa. And here's a picture from Perry as well as we can see the impact of this hurricane. Dirk Verdorn is tracking Idalia for us and is joining us now with what's expected. 
Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the storm. And we're seeing again the eye of the storm has made its way over land and now it's pushing through Florida and on into Georgia. So the center of the storm, as you can see, spinning around still in Florida, the leading edge is where we're seeing, of course, the heaviest precipitation. And that's also where we're going to see some of the strongest winds associated with this. And it's right over the Florida town of Madison. So that's where we're seeing the storm at its strongest at this point. And it's going to be making its way again into Georgia. It looks like uh, in the Valdosta area, we're going to see that. But the storm surge, we've been talking a lot about the storm surge. Now, the storm has made landfall, so we're not going to see any increase in the storm surge. We already have had the storm surge, but now we're going to see that slow process of those waters receding over the next little while. But it's right there in the area of Steinahatchee where we had the projections of the strongest storm surge, anywhere from and it's seven up to over 15 feet of storm surge possible in that area. I have not seen any reports yet of how strong the storm surge was there. Um, you can see near Horseshoe Beach, we're looking at four to seven feet, and we see much less as you get into these areas of blue, anywhere from two to four feet. So again, the central portion here is where we're seeing some of the strongest. Now, I did look up at Cedar Key, and they do have a station, and it was reporting about a nine foot storm surge. And so that's a pretty decent storm surge so far south of where we saw the heaviest or the greatest potential for the highest storm surge there at Steinhatchee. So this is Futurecast showing us where the storm currently is and the direction or the path that it's expected to take across Georgia.